Hey, hello! Welcome to my shop again. Um, today we're going to do a uh, natural edge maple burl bowl. And uh, I'm going to do this in a two-part series. People have asked me quite often over the years, you know, I've, I've got this special burl that's uh, sitting in my yard. I'm afraid to use it. I don't know what to do with it. Uh, where do I start? Uh, lots of questions about doing a burl. So the first part, I'm going to rough this out and talk about my thought process and all of the planning that I do to get the, the rim balanced and the rim in the right place so I capture the natural edge and I capture the color and character of the the burl as best as it can be. Uh, I want to go for the spectacular and, and not settle. So there's a lot of planning going on. I want you to to uh, be able to see what I'm uh, thinking about when I'm doing my planning. And some little tricks uh, about uh, the planning process when you're working with a rough area that's uh, a little harder to work with uh, on the lathe. The second part is actually going to turn the bowl, and that'll be a standard kind of a bowl thing, only natural edge you'll have wings flying around, but uh, uh, the bowl process uh, will be in the second part where I turn the outside and the inside and then reverse it and finish the bottom. So uh, stay tuned. Another resource. Um, I did an article uh, a couple months ago for... The More Wood Turning Magazine, that's an online magazine, More Wood Turning, uh, and that's a great a great resource, great articles in there, and, and lots of information. So uh, uh, what I did in that article was talk about uh, the things that I do before I start roughing it out and putting it on the lathe, the getting it ready by using the chainsaw, uh, how do I get it out of the tree, and how do I uh, take the, the part that's going to be the, the special part uh, out of the burl when I'm chainsawing uh, uh, the blank up. So uh, go over to more wood turning uh, and uh, visit that. Okay, let's get started. Um, we're going to be using a really rough, odd shaped piece of, of burl here. And so we want to try to get the best that we can out of it. Uh, I've uh, chainsawed the, the backs off a bit, but uh, I want to find an axis that's going to be uh, uh, the best that it can be when we have uh, a special piece of wood like this. I, I know the color is going to be great from my chainsaw cut. So uh, we want to get it on uh, uh, an axis that's going to... Uh, be the uh, the best display of this color and character of the wood and I'm going to have a natural edge here that will uh, uh, accentuate its uh, uh, its character as well as the color of the wood is going to uh, be displayed. So as I start with every piece that I do I'm going to start on the balance point and when we start on the balance point it's knowing that that's not more than likely that's not going to be the final axis uh, on the balance point uh, so that I can get the speed of the lathe up and then we're going to move it and take a look at it and evaluate it and uh, move it to an axis that's going to be uh, get the best that we can out of this make something really special when I have a piece that's this gnarly or even when I'm trying to put a piece on the lathe that's uh, uh, not running uh, true and have a good surface, uh, square surface on it, um, the drive teeth can very often hit the uneven surface of the wood and while I'm trying to do the balancing and I want the pin to touch only so that the piece will free wheel and I can find that balance point. Once the drive center area hits the wood it then I've got to move the the motor and the bearings and the belts and everything have to move and, and the weight of that will interfere with my balancing so in order to get my balance point on a rough piece of wood many times uh, I'll take an old uh, 
live center that I've got. Uh, some of you got multiple lathes and have an old live center laying around. So now I've got a live center in my headstock and a live center in my tailstock. So when I put this on between centers, it's just going to freewheel and be able to find my center point easier. Okay, now you can see uh, after some trial and error, I found my balance point by moving it uh, with the weight goes down to the bottom, I move it up and, and find the balance point. And I've tried to access this or orient this so that the access is, is good so that the, uh, the rim of my bowl will be in a, a relatively good place. But I won't know until I start roughing this off and get some of the waste wood out of the way. And then I'd be able to see where the rim is going to be. But uh, for now, I'm on the balance point so I can get the speed of the lathe up. You can see how uh, uneven this surface is. It would be hard to use a regular drive center for this method. So it's kind of a trick there. Wherever I set it, it stays now. And so I'm on the balance point. So now I'm going to uh, mark that balance point and put a drive center in here on my balance point so that I can start to uh, tighten that up and start to hog it off one of the things that I don't want to do when I'm using a really odd shaped piece like this is take it over the bandsaw and get it round because I won't know what that axis is and that scale is, the orientation is, until I start to hog off some of this stuff on the lathe. The hogging off process is information gathering. So I don't want a bandsaw to influence my creativity here and, and my options of making this uh, the best that it can be. So a uh, bandsaw is not a good plan on that, even, even though a bandsaw is not a safe way to, to cut up a huge piece of wood. But more importantly, the influence the bandsaw might have on my shape and scale and axis once I uh, start looking at this piece to move it around to make this a piece that's spectacular rather than just mediocre. Now I have this uh, on with a drive center, so very securely uh, held between the tailstock and the headstock drive, very tight, uh, very secure. It's not going to go any place. The drive center teeth are biting deep into it. And I've got the camera view right over here so that you can see that I have uh, the high spot here close to the tool rest so that I can I know where the wood is. And if you look at it, I've got a lot of wood to take away to get down to the mass of the rest of it. So I'm going to take small cuts across. I've got my bowl gouge ready to go. I'm just going to go across here, take a cut, come back, advance a little bit more, come across again. So I'm going to uh, have support up close to the wood and the bevel is going to be there to support it while it's cutting too. Even though it's mostly air space is going by, while I'm cutting, the bevel is going to be supported. So the bevel is lined up with my handle, the bevel is lined up parallel to the tool rest. All right. All right, get my face shield on. Face shield's a must all the time, but especially when we're doing something uh, of this odd uh, shape. Okay, anchor, bevel lined up, take a pass across. Some of you out there might think I'm a little crazy to put something this wacky on the lathe without getting it round first or at least chainsawing the corners off. But uh, the methods that I use are so easy that uh, uh, it's not a problem and I can do it a lot faster, a lot easier on the lathe. I'm not beating my body up and I'm not doing something dangerous on a bandsaw or, or chainsaw. All right. So now I've got the camera in position that you can see. Uh, just for fun, I'm going to use my fingertips, right? Just to show you, there's no stress involved here. Let me find out where the wood is. There it is. All right. This is so easy. It's just effortless. Let's take a little bigger cut here so you can see it's 
I'm taking a good, uh, oh, let's see, a quarter inch cut here. All right. So, uh, really no stress on my body. So I'm getting close to where I want to be, so I, I still need to think about sneaking up on this and uh, making some adjustments even early on. Uh, I've got a, a flat spot here. Okay, If I take this all the way down to my flat spot, here's where I am here, and there's the flat spot. So I've got uh, oh three quarters of an inch there of gap and on the other side 180 degrees from that um, I'm at zero right and so I'm gonna move this whole thing over a little bit so that I can capture the the biggest piece I can I'm gonna move it over three-eighths of an inch I'm about three-quarters inch off uh, on one side than I am the other so I'm gonna move the whole thing over okay a second issue is this wing right here has nothing behind it so if I start taking this diameter down farther this wing is gonna go away and I'd like to save this wing it looks like it's pretty spectacular color but it, it's a natural edge that I want to try to maintain so again I'm gonna move it over uh, away from this a little bit so that I cut on the other side and not cut this Here's a different view of that wing again. See, there's nothing behind that wing. So if I cut this down, that wing's going to go away and I'm going to have a big low spot in the, in the rim of my bowl. Uh, my rim's going to be out here someplace. I'm going to move the whole bowl blank this direction by moving the, the drive center over about three-eighths of an inch, about that direction, okay? So that I'm going to, when I do that, it, it bulges out the other side. I'm going to take wood off the other side, and I'm going to protect this. Right. right, now that I moved it, I moved my tool rest up close. You can see right here I'm going to be cutting wood when I make my first cuts. And as I go past over here, it's going to be all air spaces all the way around. Here's my wing that I don't want to cut, so that's a good thing. I'm protecting that because it's away from my cut. All right. So let's uh, take just a little bit more off, and we'll stop and evaluate again. Okay, I'm getting close now to the diameter that I want. Okay, another little trick that I do, I've got a, a laser laying around from my hollowing system or any laser that you've got, just a laser pointer that you point on the chalkboard with. And I'm going to use that to help me because it's really hard with a, a very uneven uh, surface like that. It's hard to tell once you start cutting into it. Uh, well, it's hard to tell until you start cutting into it exactly where the rim is going to be. So I'm going to take the laser and point at it and then spin it around. I can see that 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 if that's where the rim of my bowl is going to be, I'm still okay. I'm still okay. It's still in wood. I'm still okay. So I've moved this to create this axis. Okay. Now there's my wing. There's that that area that I'm trying to protect. Okay. So let me move move the laser over to be right on that wing. There's there's a laser right on that wing. Now let's see what's happening on the other side. All the way around, still wood. I still have to take a little bit more off of there to get down in there. But you can see where the rim is going to be all the way around. And there again is my wing. Okay. The laser can be a great way to look at uh, where your rim is. It can also be a way, if I'm going to shine it directly down the parallel to my tool rest, or parallel to the bed of the lathe, it can al also show me the diameter of my piece. I've got wood all the way along here. It's shining on 
that wing area that I'm looking for. It's still there, it's still there, it's still there, it's still there. So there's a fat spot right in here that's going to go away, and that's quite all right. Okay, so I can see the diameter of the piece, and I can see the rim of the piece by shining a laser on that uneven surface. A cool little trick there. But I've got uh, still some chainsaw cut here, and I've got a big uh, hunk of stuff here. This is going to be the bottom of my bowl, so I know a lot of this stuff has to go away. So I'm going to come in here and get rid of some of this waste wood uh, just to uh, get some of the balance down in the, in the bottom of the bowl rather than the rim of my bowl. So I'm going to be working on both, both parts of this, and I uh, uh, don't want to have any surprises after I get done moving this and all of a sudden I realize well now the bottom's got a problem so I've got to look at both the top uh, positioning and the bottom positioning so I need to cut away some wood here and this is a good thing this is not being worked at here yet and uh, that's where my wing is that I want to protect and then over on the other side that's where it is being worked on. So my movement when I tilted this piece uh, between centers has accomplished what I wanted to. So I'm always keeping an eye on that. I want to protect this area right here. All right, I got have a chainsaw cut on both sides here, over here, and over here. So I can test that by putting my finger here and then going where the flat spot is of the of the chainsaw and I can measure this distance and I can come over here and I can measure this distance and that's pretty good I'm I'm equal on both sides so let's go here where the uh, the opposite side of my wing is take a, a, a look at here okay these are the top this is the top highest point on this side of the of the vessel All right I'm gonna go over here and look at I've got maybe about an inch higher here All right. so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tilt this I'm going to lower this side and raise the other side so that these top highest points on both sides of my bowl are going to be parallel to the table when I get done. Okay, so how am I going to do that? I'm going to tilt the bottom. Right? I'm going to move the wood this way. Okay? Now, before I start turning, after I moved it, before I start turning, let's double check. I gained on it. I gained on it quite a bit. So I didn't quite move it enough. I got to move it again just a little bit more. Oh, now I've got it right on. So now the two highest spots are going to be parallel to the table. And then the natural edge will flow. Turn the speed down for you. You see how it's wobbling here because I moved it. And here it's still running pretty true. That, that didn't move on the headstock's end of it. And that's what I wanted to do because of that wing. I don't want to move the headstock end. I only wanted to move, I wanted to tilt the whole piece without losing my wing. actually use my finger as a guide instead of the laser there's a high edge on that side all the way around and the high edge on this side so it is really right dead on now and uh, that's a good thing all right so now that is my axis 
after I've gotten done. I'm not. Uh, I've got. I've gotten to the point where I'm done moving it. I don't have it done yet. I don't have the final shape or or walls yet. Still got a little chainsaw cut here and uh, a little flat spot here. So that's all going to change. But I'm on the axis that I need to be. So I'm going to prepare my glue block and get ready to put it on the lathe. This is just roughed out at this stage, so stay tuned for part two and we'll do all of the turning of the bowl inside and out.